One of the processes here is carburizing camshafts. Like all the stages in the manufacture of a rover car, this is closely controlled by scientific methods plus long experience. The exact temperature at which quenching is done could make or mar the vital component. One of the most vital parts of an engine is the piston. And for this reason, the rover company makes its own to rover standards of precision. Within a tolerance of one ten thousandth of an inch, there are five sizes of piston ensuring a perfection of matching unique in the motor industry. When it comes to engine assembly, it is easy to see how rover cars have achieved their fame for reliability. The engines are precision built by men who go to great lengths and take exceptional trouble rather than run the slightest risk of imperfection. Every complete six-cylinder engine is balanced, another rover feature that is unique. This delicate piece of apparatus had to be specially designed for the purpose, as no equipment of such high standards could be obtained outside. As an additional test of performance, every engine is given a running test lasting five hours non-stop before it can be approved as fit to go into a car. Final adjustments are made and the engine is smooth and sweet. In the new paint shop, built to coincide with the production of the new three-litre car, bodies are proofed against corrosion with a variety of processes before finally being sprayed. Then they are stoved, and only the ones that achieve complete perfection go on to the assembly shop without reworking. Finally, the component parts are brought together at Soliho and on the car assembly line, the new shape of the three liter can be seen. Its precision tooled and elaborately tested parts are assembled at last. Take three whole cowhides of the finest quality, tan them to the softness of a kid glove, dye them with pleasing shades of color throw away all but the finest pieces and you have the upholstery for one Rover car. Visitors to the works are often astonished by the number of operations carried out by hand. One reason for doing so is that hand polishers could detect and remedy the tiniest flaw in the paintwork. Now comes the time for the first of the new cars to be tested. Every part of it has been tested along the line and a final visual check of every part was made before it passed these doors. But like every Rover car, it is going to be driven under expert observation for 20 miles or more on the private factory test track. From the moment he picks it up, the tester has his eyes and ears open. Part of the track is covered with artificial bumps. If there were a squeak or a rattle, this section would show it up. The sharp bends on the track are a good test of smooth gear change, although the car can and will take the whole circuit comfortably in top. All the controls, including every switch, are checked over from lights to screen spray and wipers.
more mileage on the track comes the brake test to make sure the car will stop dead straight at varying pedal pressure. This car will soon leave the works and go out into the world. The test driver's report will be filed away for many years to come, part of the pedigree certificate of a thoroughbred. For every Rover product is a thoroughbred in the true sense of the word. The outcome of the consistently high standards of a long lineage and the detailed care of today's grooming. Thoroughbred status cannot be achieved overnight, or even in a few years. And having been achieved, it can never rest on its laurels. Each Rover model has a splendid engineering tradition behind it, and a splendid future ahead of it. In short, a car designed and built in the Rover tradition. <laughs>